Federal government offers for subscription February 2020 savings bond. Businesses slow violent clashes in parts of Lagos State following ban on the operations of motorcycles and tricycles. Coronavirus continues to drag stock and commodity markets across the globe with a number of infections rising above 17,000. This is Business Express reaching you from Abuja. I am Benny Adams welcoming you to the very first edition for the month of February. Lagos, Nigeria's biggest city, has partially banned the use of motorcycles and tricycles, known as keke, following escalating number of fatal accidents. Technology-backed on-demand motorcycle companies like GoKada and Max NG are beginning to feel the bite. This is a potential boost to cab hailing services like Uber and Bolt. Well. We now move to Lagos, where Boladi Salami has been feeling the pulse of commuters, regulators, and the investing community. Boladi, I believe there has been all shades of counting the cost of this particular ban. How are the streets of Lagos? What are the people saying? Thank you, Benny. Thank you for joining me here in Sejusu, in here in Yaba, local government area of the state. Since morning, we've gone around, and it has been the same thing, complaints about what they are facing since this ban took effect on Saturday, that was 1st of February. And if you look right behind me here in Tejushu, on a normal day, this spot I'm standing is usually a beehive of activities of small and medium-scale enterprises. But as you can see behind me now, so many shops are not open for business, and the complaint is that they are finding it difficult to get to their business spot where they're going to operate their businesses. That has been the complaint we're getting from so many business operators here in Lagos. And that is the same thing, uh, Benny, that is happening virtually everywhere you go to in Lagos State. Even workers, civil servants this morning, as at 10 a.m., 10.30 a.m., some were still on the streets of Lagos trying to get a bus to their offices. The problem, the situation, Benny, it's not funny at all. I can say that to you. What about the palliative measures put in place by the Lagos state government to ensure that people don't feel the impact of this immediately? Talking about the number of buses that were provided. All right, Benny. So some palliative measures were, was, was said to be put in place by the government. But that we, we, we are yet to see. What the government said to us was that by tomorrow, that is Tuesday, 4th of February, they're going to roll out new buses and so many things will be put in place to ameliorate the sufferings of Lagosians. They said they know how difficult it can be for movement of persons and goods from a spot to another spot. So they said by tomorrow, that is 4th of February, they're going to come up with some measures to down the heat on Lagosians. That was Aboladi on the streets of Lagos giving us an update of what is happening in Lagos after the ban. Bioeconomy is a new model for industry and the economy. 
It is a hot topic for scientists and policy makers, and Nigeria is already exploring the huge potential with experts estimating that bioeconomy could boost the country's earnings by as much as 300 billion naira in the next 10 years. Nigeria is already working towards making this happen, and experts say its workability depends largely on appropriate policy framework. The Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning is driving this conversation targeted at increasing revenue and generating more jobs. Like aquatic weeds, water high scent, lettuce, etc. How the municipal waste and agricultural residues under the bioeconomy strategy are harvested using advances in technology to create new products which will help us to improve the quality of life. In the framework that will be developed later, we help in, in knowing the people, identifying what they do, and defining the direction they should go. And it will help in attracting investment. Ken Efe is a professor of economics and he will be throwing more light on how this new economy will be affecting the country and her citizens. Professor, it's always a pleasure to have Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Can we start by knowing what bioeconomy is all about? What does it entail? Now, bioeconomy is the use of uh, enzymes, biological processes, and even microbes to create new products, to create new services. Also, in the, apart from producing new products and services, it also helps us in very imaginative ways in the context of diversification to mitigate the climate change and reduce the impact of, of the climate change. And in addition, it also works on our waste and reduces them to wealth and recycl recirculates you know, the, 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 the huge waste that we have. For example, yam peel and cassava peel is about 22 million metric tons of waste, which could be feed for animals of all descriptions. Okay. At the same time, you could also convert them to inorganic fertilizers to get back into the, into the system. The same with rice. Rice husks are over 10 million metric tons. So that's, that's what it does. But the, one of the most important things about bioeconomy is that it's a, it's, a, it's a key route for diversification for Nigeria. And it could employ every one of our 202 million people. Whereas oil you can't employ anybody, mining, uh, gas, they can't employ everybody. But that has the potential to employ everyone, every, every Nigerian. And there's also an opportunity for science, technology, engineering, ICT, computer technology, all of them to come and bear on these biological processes and ensure that we create fantastic products that could radically change the economy, the shape of the economy. Wow, that's amazing, which is to say the non-oil sector is growing in leaps and bounds as it is. I, I want to ask, where is the place of bioeconomy in addressing SDG goals for Nigeria, okay. particularly looking at no, good 2030? Question. Good question. Ten of the 17 SDGs are well covered by, by bioeconomy. And, and it's a big plus for us. So whilst we are working on, on the bioeconomy, uh, you know, we're meeting most of the SDGs. And, um, and I'll tell you something else that's very important about this. Apart from the employment that it creates, bioeconomy enables us to create new seeds, new hybrid seeds that are free from, and in fact, the productivity. If you look at yam, mm -hmm. we, we, Nigeria produces 70% of world yam production. Mm. Yeah. And the amount of arable land available for us to grow uh, yam is about 5 million uh, hectares. The cost of planting material, that is yam planting material, is between 100 to 300 naira. Now, in one hectare, you can conveniently plant 10,000 yams. That's in one square meter. One square meter. Square, correct. Now, if you look at the minimum cost of 100 naira per planting material, over 10 million hectares by 10,000 is about 5 trillion. That's quite huge. That's 5 trillion naira. You can see that we are nowhere near investing as much as we will require to produce food.
but then to produce yam. But then the technology has come in from IITA and, and HB and National Biotechnology Center. Where National Biotechnology Center said they want to produce 100 million yam seedlings, and they are not being produced by mini sets. They are using the the the, the leaves to, to generate new planting materials. Now, for you to do 100 million means that we are actually going to produce twice more yam in a twinkle of an eye. And that now becomes a strategy. And the same goes with cassava, where IIT has produced cassava stems that increase production from 18 tons per hectare to 45 to 50 tons per hectare, three times more. Now, what challenges that it addresses is, you know that our food, agro, agroecological footprint is shrinking because of conflict in, and displacement in the Northeast, banditry in the Northwest, and clashes of our food production system, yeah. you know, Heather yeah. and the, in the, the, the century. That's it. correct. Yeah. So, but this is current productivity. You can increase productivity even at the current footprint. You can still double and triple our, our production, our, our yield. And then for young people, this is the industry that will mop up youth unemployment because youths are at peace with technology and they can work with all sorts of technology within very exciting areas like hydrophonics, aquaphonics, aerophonics, you know. In, in, you know, from all these issues, from, from this phonics, it, it shows a lot of money can actually be made from this. Correct. How does it work with all these phonics? Can you break it down for us? Well, if you look at China, Nigeria produces about 700,000 metric tons of fish, but we consume 2.6 million metric tons, so there's a gap of 1.9 million metric tons. Oh, okay. Now, we could use aquaculture to take care of that deficit. China, the world, the world uh, capture fishery is 2 trillion tons. China produces four times more fish from aquaculture than, than capture fishery. Why wow. can't we do that? And, and it's all about aquaculture. And in the same way, I've just explained to you about yam the, the, seed the multiplication. Yam, yes, and, and the rice. Where you just see them in small test tubes. These are yam seedlings. And they're already multiplying one million just as you are going to the airport. And they're saying that they're going to do 100 million. And that's their target. And wow. so it could be 200 million. So this is how, you know, a geometric progression. And the same goes with um, green, greenhouse food production. Uh, vegetable production in the greenhouse where in a normal one hectare of land if you are growing tomato or pepper or whatever type of pepper you may come out you may look if you get up to 20 metric tons that's the, the highest you can get in rain fed agriculture in one hectare but in a in a greenhouse of one hectare you generate as much as 300 metric tons 20 times more and young people can operate in this area. So you are not telling young people to go around with hoe and knife in, in white. No, no, no. They can stay in the comfort of their backyard and create wealth, you know, through hydrophonics, aerophonics, and all these uh, green-based, you know, increasing productivity and engaging everybody. This and of course, they can do the extension on their mobile phone. You know, you know, extension, if you're in, people in the same thing can be on the same WhatsApp group and they're asking questions and getting answers. You know, they do an extension on mobile phone. Wow, this seems to be an alternative to the oil dependency that we're experiencing today. If that is the case, for, for Nigeria, is Nigeria a player already? Are we, are we in it maybe formally no, or informally? If you look at Germany, Germany, the bioeconomic component of their GDP is 2.4 trillion euro. 2.4 trillion. That, that is huge. It's about 70% of their GDP. Wow. America is about 600 billion. Um, uh, dollars. They, they are, they, that seems less because America allowed only a few definitions, uh, not not all the all, all the subsectors. But in the case of Nigeria, we are, we expect that by 2025, 20 percent of our GDP will come from bio uh, economy. That is the the projection, and that means you are looking at about 200 200 billion dollar uh, just on bio economy alone. But uh, but that is possible. By all means. But, but where, where, are we, where are we now? Is this still a prospect? Or is something no, what, that what we are doing now it? is that much of our work is still in, 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 um, in the, at the laboratory stage um, and, and then incubation stage. But what we are doing right now in this uh, strategic framework is to bring all the players together. 
because we have the science and technology, all the MDA, science and technology, agriculture, environment, uh, national planning is coordinating all that, and, the, and all the private sector, because the, the business is done by the private sector, whether they are farmers or, or food processors or aggregators or uh, manufacturing or marketing, farmers are, are there, everybody, all the private sector are engaged in the, in the process, plus business membership organizations. So we brought all of them together over these last two days, uh, Thursday and Friday, to, 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 to rub minds on, on what the sector requires. And of course, the education is there because the skills requirement are millions of people with high level, high tech skills and all kind of uh, cutting edge skills in, 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 in whichever area that, that they are. And these products, these bioproducts are produced across the whole industries, not one industry, a mechanical in, in industry, in civil engineering, every industry is subject the, uh, in one way or the other, to, to the advances in bio, bio, the bio, I'm factor. telling you all from the bio. Look wow. at fuel. Look at fuel, for example. You wonder yeah. what what would it, we have capacity from Dangote and NMPC to mop up 30 million liters of of um, bioethanol, and, and 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 we need bioethanol from cassava. We need it from from uh, uh, sugarcane, and I know that NMPC is interested in one million uh, hectares of of bioethanol and the Dangote. So we have huge demand, totally unmet. We haven't even scratched the surface at all. Okay, for, from the look of things now, this seems science and technology driven. Would that imply a paradigm shift in our curricula in the way we do things because jobs are evolving for us it, to actually fit in to get it, the desired yeah. result? It will be a tsunami in terms no. of the curriculum, a seismic shift. Because you're now talking about creating new workforce that will be defined by agripreneur, an ICT worker, and knowledge worker. You have those three, triangle, triangle of those three. Young people are coming in with bright ideas and they have technology tools, they have science tools, technology, ICT, name it. All in working with living organisms, microorganisms to create wealth and then to degenerate and they recycle all the waste that, that is, is so abundant. So it, that's the way, that's where the job lies for the young people. How long should we wait for this to begin to happen, for us to begin to see the results since this thing is technologically driven? Are we, are we ready for it? What do we need it has started. to get ready for it? It has started. Take cotton. The average yield on cotton, cotton seed is 0 0.7 tons to 1 ton per hectare. But with the seed that was produced from, I think is a, uh, the, the National Biotechnology Center, they announced that their seed can, the yield is as much as five metric tons per hectare, 500 times increase. Wow. And at the moment, cotton is one of the 10 presidential value chains that the CBN is pushing. So you've now seen the, 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 the material, raw material is now av av available with, with thousands of hectares of, of cotton being planted. And then there's a presidential order 003 forcing the uniformed officers to go and patronize locally made goods. So the, actually the train has left in some of the, in, uh, if, at, particularly in those 10 presidential value chain, the train has left. We are vigorously applying the technology and you've seen what's going on with rice. Rice getting as much as five to six tons per hectare yield from miser miserable one ton per hectare. And then the same is happening with all, all of these are facing, biotechnology has moved in to increase productivity and, uh, and, and, and the industrial raw materials. Wow, thank you very much, Professor Ken. It's good to know that the train has left and this train should be a moving train that will never stop till we reach our destination. It's a pleasure having you on thank the you. Business Express. Hope thank you to very have much. you again and again some other time. Thank you very much. Moving on. The federal government this Monday offered for subscription February 2020 bonds. The bond comes in two and three years tenor, maturing 2022 and 2023, with February 7th as the closing date. The two-year paper is at an interest rate of 5.91%, while the three-year paper is 6.91%. Nigeria's Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index in the month of January stood at 
59.2 index points. The index grew at a slower rate when compared to the index in December 2019. Of the 14 subsectors surveyed, 11 reported growth, 2 declined, and electrical equipment subsector remained unchanged. On that note, let's see how the Naira is faring alongside other major currencies. The nation's equities market suffered its first weekly loss in 2020 as the impact of the Central Bank of Nigeria's hike in the cash reserve ratio by 500 basis points spurred sell-off in banking stocks. A total of 1.5 billion shares worth 26 billion naira in 21,444 deals were traded in the week ended 31st January by investors on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. The NSU All Share Index depreciated by 2.65% at 28,843.5 basis points as market capitalization dropped to 14.8 trillion naira. All indices finished lower with the exception of NSE Insurance and NSE Consumer Goods Indices which appreciated by 0.90% and 0.09% while NSE SM Index closed flat. The financial services industry measured by volume led the activity chart with 1.154 billion shares valued at 13.6 billion naira traded in 11,306 deals. The consumer goods industry followed with 137.1 million shares worth 3.1 billion naira. The third place was the ICT industry. Trading in the top three equities, Veritas Capital Assurance, Zenit Bank and Guarantee Trust Bank accounted for 604.6 million shares worth 9.3 billion naira in 4,069 deals. 17 equities appreciated in price, 44 equities depreciated in price, while 102 equities remained unchanged in the week. That was Muplang with the NSC Monday. Moving on, stocks this Monday shaved off more than 1% in early trade as concerns continue to rise. The All Share Index settled at 28,533.4 basis points. Market capitalization closed at 14 trillion naira. 251 million stocks exchanged hands in 4,752 deals valued at 3.1 billion naira. Fears over the coronavirus triggered sharp fall in Chinese shares when the market reopened after the Lunar New Year holiday, making it the biggest fall in four years. Bosirable has a wrap on the performances of the global stocks. Global markets continue to strive as the death toll in China from the coronavirus reached 361 on Sunday, surpassing that of SARS virus, which lasted from 2002 to 2003, while a first death outside of China was reported in the Philippines. In early trading, European markets were muted as investors appeared to brush off concerns over the UK's departure from the European Union, which took place last Friday, and the latest coronavirus developments. DAX rose 0.22%, FTSE 0.29%, and CAC 40 0.11%. Talks in mainland China dropped more than 7% on Monday as they returned to trade, following an extended holiday amid an ongoing coronavirus outbreak. Shanghai Composite fell 7.72% to close at 
0.61, Nikkei 1.01%, while the Hang Seng Index rose 0.17% to close 26,356 0.98. U.S. stock index futures pointed to a higher open as Wall Street looks set to shrug off fears over the spread of the virus. Dow futures were up by 603 points and implied a positive open of more than 127 points. In Africa, stocks were mixed. South Africa's JSE Africa Top 40 rose 0.12% and Namibia's overall index also 0.26%. While on the flip were Kenya's Nairobi All Share Tunisia's Tunidex and Ghana's GSA Composites. This is where we add this edition of Business Express. Be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTS channel. You can also communicate with us on Twitter and the handle is at NTA News Now. The hashtag is BizX. Business Express returns on Wednesday, I am Benny Adams saying, keep thinking and doing business.